Okay, so here's another video on equivalence relations. Actually, I want to talk about equivalence classes in this video. So first of all, uh, recall what an equivalence relation is. So an equivalence relation on a set S is a subset of the product, so subset of S cross S, um, that is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So then, uh, given a set S with an equivalence relation on it, um, we define uh, the equivalence class. We use this uh, blackboard bold brackets around X to indicate equivalence class. So the equivalence class of X is equal to all Y's such that X is related to Y. So another way of looking that I at that is um, um, that's equal to all y's such that x y is an element of your equivalence relation. So let's do an example. So consider this set S equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So a very simple set. And here's an equivalence relation defined on this set. You should actually check and make sure that it is an equivalence relation. We'll tick off a few of the things. For example, it's reflexive because 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5, 5 are all in there. Right? So x is related to x for all x and s. Um, and then 1, 2, 2, 1, so it's at least got some symmetry. And you can check that it's um, symmetric and transitive. I don't want to go through the whole thing. And now let's think about what the equivalence class of 1 is. So the equivalence class of 1 should be everything that 1 is related to. So um, it's in essence the second uh, of of each ordered pair that starts with 1. So here's 1. 1 is related to 1. So 1 is in the equivalence class of 1. Let's see, 1 is also related to 2. So 2 is in the equivalence class of 1. Um, and then here's another one that starts with 1 and we get 3. So the equivalence class of 1 is 1, 2, and 3 because 1 was related to 1, 1 is related to 2, and 1 is related to 3. Now how about the equivalence class of 2? Uh, let's see. 2 is certainly related to 2. So we have 2 in there. 2 is related to 1. So we have 1 in there. Then 2 also happens to be related to 3. Notice these have the same equivalence class. That might be an important fact. Um, and we can do 3 as well. So 3 is related to 3. 3 is related to 2. And let's see, 3 is related to 1. Again, they have the same set there. Does it always come out the same set? Well, let's look at 4. 4 is related to 4. 4 is not related to anything else. So that set has a single element, and it's easy to see that 5 is the same way. A couple observations. Notice that the equivalence class is always going to be some subset of S. I know you're asked to prove that. It's actually fairly obvious just from the definition. Uh, another thing is different elements can have the same equivalence class. And it says something about the equivalence. 1 is related to 2. And 1 and 2 have the same equivalence class. 2 is related to 3, and 3 and 2 have the same equivalence class. 4 is related to nothing else, and 4 is isolated in its own equivalence class. The same with 5. Now suppose we added another couple of uh, relations into this set, and we put uh, 4 is related to 5, 5 is related to 4. Um, that actually you can check, it's still an equivalence relation, this set. Uh, and then we'd have to add into here 5, we'd have to add into here 4. 
And you can kind of see right away that if two elements are related to each other, they're going to have the same equivalence class. Now that's a proof and that's a sort of an important fact. But do several examples and you'll be able to see that. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say about equivalence relations.